Hi, I'm Priscilla Mims to everyone. I'm a member of the city government committee. And uh, today we're going to present some of the things we've learned from the project and hopefully whet your appetite if you haven't already um, uh, had a chance to look at the interviews to uh, want to run to um, start watching them uh, regularly. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we'll give you an update on where we are in our project to interview 50 aldermen. We're going to watch the videos and register for premieres, what we've learned thus far, uh, and then we'll do a little self-assessment, our goals and whether we're meeting them. And there'll be time for some input um, uh, for everyone. And one of the things I'd like to ask is you not use the chat. Uh, if you have, we're going to um, I'll allow time for questions after kind of each major segment. I personally find as someone giving the presentation chat is very uh, disruptive to my chain of thought. And even as a participant, um, it gets in the way of my listening to what's going on. So, uh, you know, because they're not, there aren't that many of us. Uh, if you, um, when there's time, you can just unmute yourself, ask a question, or if you prefer, you can use the raise the hand um, uh, symbol, which I believe if you look under reactions or else it's under participant, one or the other um, uh, for Zoom. So, but I have to start off by doing thank yous. And first of all, to the city government committee members, Margaret Herring, who's our chair, and she's going to be doing her first interview this um, coming up this week. Uh, Ab Abigail Nichols, who is our amazing scheduler. Uh, and when I call, if you're here and I call up your name, please wave. So Abigail manages to get all these people for us. Uh, and then Rochelle Riffer, who is um, a spreadsheet creator extraordinaire, and that's how we keep track of some of the things I'm going to be sharing with you. She was our very first interviewer back in January of 2021, and she is a Zoom host as well. <laughs> and then we have Hannah Lakani, who is our original uh, teacher of, of Zoom host and scheduler, as well as a Zoom host and interviewer. Margie Gilbert, Julia Utset, and Megan Lott Mathias, um, who's a brand, uh, one of our brand new members on the committee. Secondly, our Zoom hosts and interviewers. Um, they do, they do a, a, all the work, both um, in front of the camera and behind the camera. Uh, Debbie Halpern, who does both. Uh, Elona Vasquez, who is a great interviewer. Judy Schindler also, who does, is able to do both. Tina Brady Pettis, um, a wonderful interviewer. Barbara Gehring, another great interviewer, that Betty Magnus and Annie Lowe, who both done interviews. And then um, a few uh, new people you'll be seeing, Chris Brace and Esther Callen, and then Molly Bartlett also did, uh, served as a Zoom host for one of our um, interviews. And then of course, uh, Sophie, she um, does all the web postings for us, some editing of our videos. And of course she sends out all the Zoom connections to watch the premieres and nothing would get done without her. And then finally, uh, Karen Sandrick and Helene Gebelnick who do the weekly newsletters that advertise everything for us and are nice enough to print all the things I send them both before and after each interview. So um, uh, just to get a feel for me on how, um, uh, kind of where your all your background is, I am going to take two polls. And um, I, when you answer, it's anonymous, so I don't care, um, but it just gives me an idea of who the audience is. So you should hopefully be seeing um, the first poll, which is how many interviews have you watched? So um, if you'll just indicate how many. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll. One, two, three, and poll. And I don't know that you can, uh, let me see if I can share results so you can all see. And um, you can see we've got a few people who haven't watched very many. Um, uh, a, a number of you um, uh, who have watched oh, somewhere between four and 10. And then a couple of you who've done um, 
at least a third of the interviews that we've done, which that helps me to know what your background is. Then the second poll I'd like to know is, let's see, how, um, let's see, how, uh, here we go. When did you last watch an interview? So again, if you'll just multiple choice, if it was recently, sometime in the fall, sometime before then, or you haven't yet. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll, one, two, three. So again, a number of you have watched them recently and a couple of you haven't yet. So I'm hoping uh, that as a result of this, you'll wanna run to your computers very soon and start watching them. No, I don't want to do it. Okay, um, I'm very proud of myself. First time I've created polls. Uh, so um, with that background, uh, where we are right now, 31 interviews have been completed or are scheduled. And our, we have premieres almost every Thursday at 6 p.m. And they're scheduled up through March 17th now. Our next one to premiere this coming week at Thursday at six is with Finance Committee Chair Scott Wagasback of the 32nd Ward. And um, I sit in on most of the interviews. I sat in on that one and it's really interesting. So I do highly recommend it. Uh, then um, we think we've got um, about a dozen, maybe 15 more that will actually end up being scheduled. We are anticipating that there'll be uh, several uh, aldermen's offices that just they just don't respond. So we probably won't get them um, scheduled along the way. But I'm thinking if we get between 40 or more, which I'm sure I, I'm sure we'll get at least 40, 40 to 45. I think that's a great response to the league and this project. So next, um, I want to show you where to go if you want to watch these videos uh, uh, and or sign up. So uh, this is the League of Women Voters of Chicago's homepage, lwvchicago.org. If you look under events and you see we have our own category, Zooming with the Alderman. And then when you come to this page, you will see two lists. One is sorted by ward order and the other one is sorted by most recent. And you can see at the very top there, you can register to see the premiere of Alderman Scott Wagaspak. But if you can't watch it at 6 p.m. Um, on this Thursday, when you come back, you'll see, you'll be able just to click on any of these to uh, watch the interview. So just to show you, here we go with that. And you could start watching it. So very, very easy. Okay. So any questions on this before I go? So again, we go back to the homepage under events. The zooming with the alderman, just click on that and you're all, you're there. Okay. Um, so let's get into the meat of this. What we've learned thus far. Uh, we, one of the questions we ask all the aldermen are, what are some of the main issues faced by people in your ward? And overwhelmingly, uh, the number one issue that was raised was gun violence or crime in general. Um, no surprise there. Affordable housing came up a number of times, as well as economic development and better, better education opportunities, particularly good schools to go to locally was raised a number of times. Uh, next issue, when well, we started off uh, last January, asking about redistricting and whether or not the aldermen would support the idea of an independent commission. Uh, we ended up with five aldermen uh, supporting that. Um, our, one alderman uh, did suggest 
a hybrid combination made up of an ind independent people as well as aldermen together. Uh, and um, a couple of, of the alder people did support keeping neighborhoods together in a single ward. And we did end up after a number of months when it was clear that there was going to, they were, this council was not going to embrace the idea of an independent commission. We changed the question slightly to ask about keeping a neighborhood intact. Uh, uh, but then as we got closer to December 1, we said, you know, uh, this is all going to be done. It's going to be passe. Well, we were wrong on that, but we did change the question to ask about a lack of transparency uh, as a result of something that the city government committee members had noticed in a, looking at agendas. And one of the things we've done in the city government committee is divide up some of the committees, some of the key committees among ourselves. And we're reviewing agendas of the committees at this point, looking for items of interest. And uh, one of the things that we noticed was there is an ability, most, most agendas list items. In fact, I'm gonna start sharing my screen again. Let's see. Um, So I'm going to show you uh, the agenda uh, for the Committee on Finance. And this is a tip, this is a tip that agendas look different from committee to committee, but this isn't all that unusual. You'll see for their meeting, they do have an agenda. They, by the way, the approval of rule 45 report, that's essentially the minutes. Um, then you're gonna notice here, in this case, the second item was from the office of the mayor and a communication recommending approval. You'll see that it says direct introduction. I'll explain what that means in just a minute. But then we get down to some other items and you'll notice here, there is a number associated with this. It's ordinance 2021-5882. And most of these do have these numbers associated. Why that's so important is then we can look up um, by inserting the number into the Legistar what the text of this item really is. But when we go back to this, we see this direct introduction, there's no number. There's absolutely no way to see what is being introduced. And in this case, there were actually several direct items of introduction here. Here we go, Department of Law, some miscellaneous items. And so we were left, if you, um, you cannot see ahead of time what this is about. So the question is, you know, would, is this something that you would wanna have some input as a member of the public? And one of the things we're finding is generally these items are not assigned a number by the clerk's office well, often until after they've been approved, not only by the committee, but by the city council. So that means that the public has had absolutely no way of seeing these things. So we started to ask all their people about whether they would support requiring uh, well, basically posting of the text of these items at least two business days before the meeting. Uh, what we've gotten back is some uh, responses that actually haven't responded to what we're talking about because they say, oh, they're all posted. Well, they're not. And uh, what we're, so we're fi still fiddling with the question, but I think I finally hopefully arrived at the best wording because I've discovered that the older people themselves uh, cannot easily um, do direct introductions, but the mayor and all her departments can. And that's where the problem is. And again, without a number being assigned, you cannot look up the text. You have no idea what really, they, they just have to have a description of the subject matter. So there's a true problem with transparency at the current way the city council is being run. And so we've got it on our list to go in and uh, meet. We've already talked with the clerk's office. We're going to go in and talk with the rules committee chair and probably vice chair. And I'm sure because the real problem lies with city hall, we'll have to talk with some people in the mayor's office and see uh, if something can't be done. Um, this is unusual. 
I can tell you from watching the Cook County for many, many years, nothing gets on the agenda without a number and you can look and see what it says ahead of time. So um, they also provide for about four, day, four business days prior notice of the main agendas. And they can introduce um, items after the fact, but nothing can get approved by the full board um, in that case without it going to committee. So there's plenty of time for the public to weigh in. Um, another item on our list um, is uh, when we started the project, we were asking the alders whether, uh, and this really relates to a Chicago league position that the city department should be dealing with very small, more routine matters rather than clogging up the city council agendas and committee agendas with minor items like, can you put a driveway in? What about a stop sign here? Um, all very, a signage on buildings. So we asked the question and the consistent answer from every alder person of all different persuasions was, the city um, departments do not have enough staff to go out to the wards to check out the specifics of these small minor matters. It is the alders staff that go out and check them and talk with the appropriate people. So they felt strongly that this should stay within the um, uh, alders offices of basically, this is their alderman prerogative, if you would. So unless they approve these things, it usually doesn't get on to a city council agenda. All well and good. Um, uh, so we finally said, you know, we're not going to keep asking that question. Um, however, the real problem is when you look at an agenda for the city council meeting, you're going to have pages and pages of these small items that are included on uh, the agenda. So you, trying to um, look through the important things and, uh, uh, and ignore all the minor stuff can be difficult. So it takes some time. We're getting, we're, the city government committee members, I think, are getting to the point where we're getting pretty good at this, uh, but it still takes an awful lot of time and trouble to go through. So uh, it's, it's one of those things we'd love to come see if there's a way to come up with a compromise, a new procedure, but we haven't developed that yet and we'll have to do a lot of talking going forward. Um, so because we were getting the same answer for ev from everyone, we said, well, let's stop asking this question. Um, there's no point in hearing it 50 times. So we said, okay, what's the number one issue we keep hearing being raised? Gun violence. So we have a new question related to gun violence. And the question itself asks them, uh, is there anything the city is currently doing that you think is good? And then as well as a follow-up then, uh, what else do you think the city should be doing? So we're not getting a lot of unusual answers. Uh, certainly a number of, um, number of them uh, will not answer the question. They just talk in general terms about how gun violence has a number of different problems. Um, a few of them have answered and said, one of the things they really think is useful is the small street outreach effort. Uh, one older person about a patient she's involved with where when there's been a, a, a shooting, they go to the hospital and try to make sure there um, isn't any retaliation as a result of the uh, shooting. So that's been interesting. Another thing that certainly comes up a lot is mental health and the need for mental health, more mental health uh, uh, support throughout the city. Some people... Uh, a couple of the alders did raise the lack of police officers. And one of the things we discovered, from, and this has been confirmed by um, uh, uh, Greg Hines in, in Cranes, is that the city is down by over a thousand officers from where they were in January of 2020. So we have fewer police officers these days. Uh, and that's pretty scary to me anyway. Um, so we have no solutions for this, but it, it's obviously a huge issue 
and uh, I, I, not going away soon, but the, certainly the city, um, a lot of people praise the idea that there's a new pilot program now to uh, curate alternatives to police going out when there's, it's really a mental health issue or the police going out with a social worker uh, to try to uh, damp down uh, and prevent violence as a result of mental health problems. Another issue, ranked choice voting. We started asking about that. We have just a few people, alders that are supportive of it. Um, Alderman Hairston of the fifth, Alderman Garza of the 10th, Alderman Rodriguez of the 22nd, Alderman um, Sigjo Lopez of the 25th, Alderman Maldonado, Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez and Alderman Smith. Uh, Many others said that they would consider it if they could learn more about it. A few people were adamantly opposed. A couple people wanted to go back to the old way of electing other people with um, the, uh, 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 whoever won the February primary, whether it was um, by 60% of the votes or 25% of the votes, plurality, that would be the person who would be elected and go back to partisan elections. Um, it, it was interesting to hear that. Uh, most of the people I would say were fairly supportive of the current system of the nonpartisan February election with the top two, if you don't get 50%, the top two vote getters then going for April. A number of others though did cite the expense involved with that uh, as well as how some of those campaigns could get very ugly. So. Uh, a broad range there. Uh, a number of them mentioned the problems they saw with the New York um, City ranked choice voting system uh, last spring. And of course, um, I think most people do say though that the problems with that was not with ranked choice voting, but with the fact that the New York uh, election authorities have a very, very bad system uh, and they're notorious for not being able to count votes very quickly and generally just having major problems there. So I think ranked choice voting got kind of a bad rap uh, for being blamed for something that had nothing to do with ranked choice voting. So um, now um, I'd like to take a break from there uh, and see if there are any questions about what I said so far. Okay, well, one of the things I, I um, we've kind of, the city government people, we kind of got together and uh, we uh, uh, want to just a kind of a change of pace here is um, to hand out a couple of awards. And um, hopefully this will entice you to check out some of these interviews. But I think it was unanimous that the best backdrop was with Alderman Jeanette Taylor of the 20th Ward. And definitely take a look at that um, video and see what her backdrop is. It was um, it's really my favorite, certainly my favorite one of all of them. And uh, for those for those of you who have uh, uh, seen Alderman Taylor on the news, you're going to see her in a very different light uh, in this interview. And uh, that's one of the things that I encourage on all of these interviews. You get to see them in a very relaxed mode and non-combative and just, I think, interesting and truly themselves. Um, another award, the most unusual location for the interview uh, is um, uh, the one that was done with Alderman Howard Brookings of the 21st Ward. He was in his car. And the story is that he uh, was running late for our interview. He had just finished um, some kind of court proceeding and he ran out to his car and used his phone. He wasn't driving, he, he was parked uh, and uh, logged in for the interview. So it was, it was conducted while he was sitting there in his car. Um, then we have two for um, probably most surprising prior career more. Uh, and that was uh, actually, you won't know this from the interview, but I know it because I, I uh, always research uh, the backgrounds of all these aldermen to write up the little blurbs that go in the newsletter before we interview. And this goes to Alderman Raymond, Raymond Lopez of the 15th Ward. 
His prior job was as a sky cap for Southwest Airlines at Midway Airport. So, um, uh, and literally, I think that was the immediate past job before he was elected. Another unusual prior career was one um, was uh, the one held by Alderman Alderwoman Rosano Rodriguez Sanchez of the 33rd Ward. She was a drama teacher before uh, being elected Alderwoman. So we got a few more awards, but let's hold those off and let's go back to a few more issues. And that is, um, we heard both before, during, and after the interview, some of these things. Um, and that's one of the advantages of being either a interviewer or a Zoom host, is we get to chat with the older person uh, as well as doing the part of the interview. And sometimes the most interesting stuff occurs after the interview and we've turned off the recording. So, a couple of older people early on raised the issue of committee chairs and the power they wield. And the, one of the big powers they wield besides determining what goes on the agenda and when they have meetings is the fact that they control staff members. In each budget, uh, there is an, an allocation to each committee of a certain amount of money. And the committee chairs basically can determine how many people they hire as staff and what their jobs are. And there's no oversight. They're not, they're exempt from Shackman. They don't, you know, political considerations can be there. Um, and they, the staff people don't have to have any ba particular background that relates to the committee. So you may have heard in the past, people have hired their relatives, friends and relatives to be their staff people which may not be bad if, they, if they're good workers, but again, very little oversight. Now, the saving grace is the amount of money that's allocated to each committee um, with one or two exceptions is fairly small. We're talking, in the scheme of things, we're talking, uh, um, I believe, and I, and I can't remember the total amount of money we added up for the committees, uh, certainly not, maybe, I don't know, was, was maybe about a million dollars, maybe a little bit more. And in the scheme of a, what is it, a $10 billion budget, it was fairly small. So we're not talking a lot of money, but we were really pleased to, we started to look into this issue on city government. And one of the things we were pleased to see is that the independent inspector general of the city um, last fall, one of the investigations they com completed was on the timesheets for the staff. And one of the things that they recommended, uh, they found a lot of, in a lot of cases, there were no timesheets. Uh, so you really never knew what these people were doing to earn the salaries they were getting. Um, so they, uh, one of the recommendations, which he reported that was accepted was that the committee chairs would standardize their timesheet sheet keeping. And again, in the scheme of things of everything that was going on, we've kind of put this on the side as anything further um, to pursue, pursue at this point. Another thing that was raised was meetings. Um, uh, Alderman Taylor, you'll see if you watch her interview, she complained that the committee she was on, they hardly ever met. And she felt that they should be meeting. And of course the committees don't have to just meet to consider issue or ordinances that have been referred to them, but they can also meet on subject matter. And you, if you ever look at the Legistar system of Chicago, which lists is a calendar of all the meetings, sometimes you will see that a committee is holding a hearing and no votes will be taken. And it's usually on an important piece of subject matter. So we did a, we did a quick study because you can use Legistar to figure out how many times each committee has met over the course of a year. And we found indeed there were a few committees that hardly ever met. Um, we've kind of, again, put that to a side for now because there's only so many hours in the day, but we may, we may be coming back to that. Um, but some other issues that have been raised is who selects the chairs? A number of the older people said they would like to see it change. Right now, essentially the mayor selects the chairs of the committees. Uh, technically the city council votes on who the chairs are, but she manages um, certainly with the way, she, and I, when I say she, it could have been he in the past, this is nothing new. Um, 
uh, they line up enough support so they can pass. So um, essentially the mayor selecting the chairs and the vice chairs of each committee. It's the chairs, not the vice chairs, who have complete control over the staff. And as I said, they are Shaftman exempt, meaning uh, they have total power as to who to hire. Um, uh, a number of the alders raised the fact that as a result of the pandemic, the, the committees had been meeting via Zoom. And that's been a real boon to them because, and they'd like to continue that. Why? Because they don't have to physically go to City Hall. They also, uh, it pretty much prevents two city council committee meetings at the same time. And so they, they had run into problems in the past where one meeting ran late and they, had a, they were supposed to be in another committee meeting, which was meeting in a different room, and which, which meeting to go to. So they think Zoom is the way to go for the, at least the, the committee meeting. Another thing that's been raised um, oh, uh, is that a number of them would love to have a set monthly date for the committees to meet, or at least a couple of the committees to have regular dates, uh, finance certainly being one of them. And the, um, uh, reason is they want to make sure that they don't set another committee meeting on a, a day when finance meets because their meetings tend to go on for a very long time. So it, it makes it difficult uh, to set another meeting that day. And I will just mention at the county, they have two, two committees that are, I have set dates. Uh, one is the rules and the other one is the finance committee. And the other committees kind of fit in uh, among, um, to avoid any conflict with them. Another item that's been raised is that the city council should have their own parliamentarian or, or their own attorney. One of the, some of the council members feel strongly that uh, there is a parliamentarian who reports to, is basically um, from the legal department and reports to the mayor. And they feel that they, the parliamentarian has not always ruled correctly or fairly uh, uh, during the course of a meeting. So they wanna make sure they have their own expert. And then a number of them cited the fact that there's a really need to update the processes of the way the council operates. One of the things um, that is coming is what they call digital documents, whereby everything that's gonna be filed at the, the council um, has, to go, has to be um, uh, online, if you would, or uh, a Word document or some kind of document that, that is easily transferred among all the council members. And it would allow for uh, the members to read the uh, text of the document ahead of time and then sign on to be a co-sponsor uh, beforehand. And it also gives them time to digest. This may, if this is done also with the items that are currently being direct introduced, this may eliminate the problems we're having with all these direct introductions by the uh, city departments where we can't see the text. We know this is coming because Rochelle and I are on an advisory commission for the city clerk's office, which is spearheading uh, a drive to modernize city council procedures. And that's one of the things hopefully that is coming. Um, another thing that's coming and it should be here by the end of this month, if they meet their, their targeted deadline is that for at least the city council meetings, not the committee meetings, but the council meetings, they're going to start having online voting. So you will be able to see, or electronic voting. So you'll be able to see uh, how each older person voted on every single item. Uh, now, as I understand it, uh, the public will not see this right away unless you're in the council chambers themselves. Uh, but it will be post, um, uh, they, they do record all of these meetings. And while the live stream, you may not be able to see it after the fact, you should be able to see it on the recording as I understand it. I'm not quite sure why they don't wanna show it right away, but little steps. 
So um, at this point, any, any questions about that? Okay, um, maybe uh, time for um, another uh, award. And this is for the most intriguing idea to increase funding for the city. And kind of surprisingly, it came from Alderman Patrick Daly Thompson of the 11th Ward. Yes, the Alder person you've been reading about in the news this week. And um, I found this at least extremely interesting. He, his, he's been talking about um, putting a tax on package deliveries, you know, all the Amazon deliveries, et cetera. And while he was proposing a dollar per package, I don't know that that's the correct amount, but he's been talking to uh, some uh, professors at the UIC um, about, uh, about this idea. And it's an intriguing idea. Um, what, as he explained it, besides raising a bunch of money for the city, uh, which you could avoid, of course, if you decide to instead go to a store to buy something, um, uh, and it also then would encourage people to go to actual stores who pay property taxes to us, uh, uh, our city, and generally provide a lot of jobs locally. So I thought it was an interesting idea. It hasn't gone anywhere. I don't know if it'll go anywhere anytime soon, but it, it was something different. And uh, we often don't get a lot of different ideas through these interviews. So, uh, I think we actually, um, uh, Karen actually did a, a, a follow-up story on, on this in the newsletter at the time. So um, uh, other things we've learned, and this, um, uh, this is not issues, but as, as those of you who have watched our interviews know, at the beginning, before we start asking any questions, we show uh, the map of all 50 wards in the city. And then we hone in on the actual uh, map of the ward in question for the older person. One of the things we've certainly seen is some a lot of strange shapes and you cannot necessarily know what that means because there could be a lot of different reasons um, such as a forest preserve or something and as a re or highways that account for the strange shapes. But one of the things we have learned because we asked the aldermen what neighborhoods are in your ward. Um, so they tell us and we see that very few neighborhoods are kept intact. Most of them are divided among, it's, we seem to hear in every case that they're in two, three, four, five. I think, I think Englewood has the crown of having the most, of uh, being in the most number of wards, which I think is six. Um, and it really shows how much carve out has been done. Now, granted, these quote neighborhoods are out of date. They, I think they were developed and Abigail, you can correct me, but I think they were done like 20, 30 years ago in terms of the outlines. 50 years ago, is that right? 50 years? Okay. So, uh, you know, they really need to be redrawn. Um, uh, at this point, um, but, it, but it's clear that um, a lot of places are cut up and even some of the older people say, you know, I have like just a tiny little bit of this neighborhood and uh, they, you can, I mean, not that they don't love the people, but they can see that it doesn't make any sense for them to have that small uh, piece of the pie. There is one exception so far, and maybe we'll come up with some more, but that is the 19th Ward, which is in the southwest corner of, of the city where they're bordered, um, they literally on the borders of the city. And that, um, that ward ha has, since the 1920s, included all of Beverly, Mount Greenwood, and Morgan Park. And at least up to now, that is still the case and they are not divided, but that is definitely the exception. Another thing that I learned, and I think those who have interviewed or sat in as the Zoom host or just sat in, is the vast majority of the older people are extremely personable. 
And it makes sense because how would they get elected if they weren't? But it's been a it's it's I it's been a very enjoyable experience just to get to know them, and I hope that comes through on the interviews and for those of you who've watched them. Another thing is that they all love and are great boosters of the their wards and the people in them. They all speak with great pride about what's contained in their ward. Um, uh, they uh, are boosters and are telling us all the time on that. And in fact, I'll just, another award is going to be given to Alderwoman Susan Sadowski Garza as the best offer to tour her ward. She offered to take us around herself. <laughs> and she purely does this for people to tout the 10th ward, which is in the Southeast corner of the city um, and contains, um, the only national, like, um, I think the national park or state park in the city. Um, and I think Alderman Burnett's comment was very telling. He, he, he said, you know, and this is in the interview itself. He said, quite frankly, the Alders hate to lose any parts of their wards as a result of redistricting becomes, because they come to know the people in their wards and he said that he, is, he makes a practice of continuing to invite all the seniors that used to be part of his ward um, uh, over the years because he loves keeping in touch with them. <laughs> so I thought it was a, kind of a different uh, take on re what redistricting is all about. Now, um, and that leads me um, uh, to a, another award. Um, and that is the most supportive of the Zooming project. And first of all, that really goes to all the alders who've agreed to be interviewed. Uh, but I want to give a special call out to Alderman Michelle Smith of the 43rd Ward, who agreed to be interviewed the very first one last January of 2021, when we had no track record to go by. Um, and then, um, uh, similarly, Alderman Brian Hopkins of the second ward and Alderman Daniel Sposato of the first ward, who agreed, who are our next two um, interviews, who agreed again um, to be interviewed right in the beginning. Um, and then I want to also mention Alderman Derek Curtis of the 18th, who was so enthusiastic about this program. He said he wants us to interview all the alders every year. Um, and he says it's very important that we build relationships with each other. The alders with the league and the league with the alders. Now I'll tell you, I'm not volunteering to do this after we finish the 50, but hopefully someone else will, will want to take it up. Um, but it just proved, I think there's ways to keep in touch with all these alders following the project. Um, and I think that leads us to one of the benefits that we really saw as part of uh, this whole process. And that was for us to get to know them and them to get to know us. And I guarantee, and it's not just the alders, but their staffs, because Abigail is usually dealing with the staff people. And I guarantee you um, that there's a lot of staff people who have never heard of the League of Women Voters. And now they're getting to know us. They're seeing our letters, which specifically says that we're nonpartisan. Um, they're getting to talk with Abigail, who is a great representative for us. And I, I um, think that uh, hopefully, I think all the alders have felt like it's been a positive experience for them. And that's one of the reasons why we made the decision early on to basically use the same thing same questions, changing them as necessary over the course of the years, but send it to them ahead of time. So we're not trying to put them on the spot. We're trying to get information from them. And um, uh, as I said, they've used this as an opportunity to tout their wars as well as some of their pet projects on them. So I think that has been a resounding success. Um, some of the other goals of the project uh, um, we said we wanted to educate members and the public as to who represents us. And I would say yes to some extent, but only if people watch the videos 
And so again, I hope you'll be um, enticed to watch the videos. Those of you who watched them and found them interesting, please tell your friends. As I said, you go to lwvchicago.org, look under events and click on Zooming with the Alderman and you get the full list right there and you can pick and choose from among the interviews or watch them one at a time. Um, uh, and one of the things uh, we've got a follow up on, uh, Margaret is gonna be meeting with the communications people hopefully soon to get them to hopefully um, work on drawing more outside attention. Uh, we think this would be a natural to tout to WTPW, WBEZ, WVON, which is uh, 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 probably the number one station among African-Americans, um, as well as all the television stations. They should be doing the feature on this um, and of uh, ways that people can watch uh, uh, and learn who's representing them. Uh, another related then is raise the profile of the league with the press and members of the public. I say not yet. So hopefully uh, Margaret working with the communications people can start that ball rolling. Another thing we hoped was we result in new members because we, we were expecting we would be getting more uh, PR from this project than we've gotten so far. So I would say not yet, but all of you can help. Uh, I know for this program itself, I, I emailed bunches of my friends to tell them about it. And, and there's a couple of people who did sign on, so, which I'm very grateful for. So, I, and I also told them, even if you can't come today, here's the website to go look at um, the interview. So please share, uh, you've got a lot of power, use it. And then another goal was to afford existing members the opportunity to become active with the project because we know that active league members stay league members. So I would say um, we've we certainly met that to some extent. Um, remember all those thank yous at the beginning, um, evidence of that. And Margaret was just telling me she's already gotten notice of yet another person who has volunteered. And I've got a couple other people. Alone has been a great recruiter for us. Um, uh, and so I've got a couple other people I have to uh, contact in my spare time and try to train them to, for our remaining interviews. Um, and one of the reasons why we thought it was so important to get to know the city council, its members and its operations through these interviews is ultimately, we see this as the opportunity to when the league is, wants to do some action at the city council. You have to know the players to be effective. And you, know, you need to know who to contact and they need to know who you are. So we see this as ultimately basically laying the basis for further action by the league down the road. Now, one of the first things we have, we can certainly come up with new um, initiatives or uh, work with some of the existing older people on their initiatives, but to react to things that are on agendas is a ways away. And that's partly because the agendas are generally posted uh, no sooner than 48 hours, we're not even talking two days, 48 hours before the meeting. And uh, we get notices from the Legistar uh, at 2 a.m. in the morning after they've been posted. So usually we have maybe one day's notice because uh, we're not getting up at 2 a.m. to check these, these uh, agendas. So that really doesn't leave us any time for action. But again, we're learning the process, which allows us then to go in and seek reform of the process. As I mentioned, uh, at Cook County, they, their main agendas are posted four business days before the meeting. And we'd love to get the city council um, uh, at least two business days. Um, and those Legistar notices to come out immediately because with Cook County, as soon as it's something is posted, I get an email telling me what's been posted. And so I know whether I care about it or not. 
And so the, let the new Legistar system that their city, the city clerk is working on, hopefully, is going to provide much better notices and much faster notices. Uh, so the last thing um, uh, on uh, my agenda uh, was we'd like to hear from you. Um, first of all, uh, what are some of the things you've learned if you've been able to watch? So unmute yourself and have at it. Hi, Chris. Uh, this is Claudia Jackson. Great. Um, Hi, Claudia. First of all, thank you so much. This has been so informative. Um, I can't thank the committee enough for what they've taken on. Um, this will help inform all the other committees of which we're I'm part of the um, Environmental Action Committee. Um, so this is just, this is hugely helpful. Um, I have three things. Um, one, uh, in terms of getting our name out there and getting some recognition, is there, um, has anyone thought of contacting the Better Government Association, the BGA? Because I would think this would be a celebratory thing. They can help us get out there that the city council is engaging with us. This is like catching government doing something right. Um, so they may be interested in just, you know, in their newsletters or even David Grising and his lovely uh, opinion pieces for Cranes and the Tribune might help get our name out there. He's a He's a, he's a good guy and I think they do some amazing work. So I just wanted to put that out there as a suggestion. Great, and listen, I just wanna make sure that um, uh, my committee members are writing these ideas down. So that's a call out to all of them to be sure and do that. So I think that's a great, great suggestion. So keep at it, Claudia. Okay, okay. secondly, um, I'm a very visual person and auditory learning is always my a soft spot. I would love to get, not in any huge depth, because I'm not looking for you to do any extra work, but a written synopsis of what we just did today. Um, because there were so many points I couldn't keep, I couldn't write fast enough because I was missing the conversation. Um, that will help, again, um, us as a committee with the Environmental Action Committee, um, be better at how we deal with our aldermen and you know any communication. So that would be a request of mine to get out there. Okay. And then lastly, um, the Environmental Action Committee has managed to get Alderman Riley to respond to us, at least through his office. Um, so I'm offering Abigail, if you want to get to Riley, because I see he has not signed up for an Oh, no, no. Uh, just, just to stop you there. Don't, yeah. don't assume that. We, we're going okay. in war number order. And so okay. we haven't gotten to the 42nd ward yet. So okay. I have no doubt that he will respond. Okay, well, I'm just offering help should thank you, you need to get to- Well, he's so. my alderman and they know me. I'm not worried about him. <laughs> so awesome. thank you. Fabulous, but, okay. Thank you. That was, that was everything. And, and, you know, I could jump in here now about Claudia's suggestions. Can you hear me? Do you all hear me now? Yes, no. yes. Oh, because now I'm on my phone, my computer, my laptop, and now my phone. I've got to get some things fixed. Anyway, everybody on this call are, is one of our busiest league members. And it's finding the way. And Alona has got that, officially got that job to help people get into the league. And, and listening to this program again and taking the minutes or, or coming up with the detailed news story is a kind of fixed job that's not overwhelming, but I'm not gonna volunteer for it. I know how to do it, but I got, you know, everybody here and that's, and I know Alona is just working on that. And I'm glad to talk to newcomers about how they can take on a job that'll help them get to know the league, feel useful and, and do something, yeah, feel useful and get to know us because uh, it's a, uh, it's very, it, it's great. And I'm grateful to Pris for her getting me involved in the way I have for scheduling, because it is, it's kind of a rote job. The more you do it, either the offices are getting more organized or I'm getting more organized because it gets easier and easier to do. I'm not changing the city by any means, but 
I'm trying to change the city in other ways because of what I've learned. And, and, and if I can just say one more thing following up is that I witnessed that whole thing about the mayor's attorneys rather than the council attorneys on one of the hearings in December. One of the aldermen was asking the chairman of the rules committee, Michelle Harris, if I got probably the wrong name, why his, his rule, his law, his proposed legislation wasn't moving. And at some point, he wanted the lawyer to speak to it. The lawyer wouldn't speak to it because it would damage client communication, uh, confidentiality. The alderman said, I would like to waive client con confidentiality and get an answer to my question. The attorney replied, my superiors have advised me not to speak on this issue. And so that would be in the mayor's office. It was it was an interest, interesting exchange to watch. And I may have the subject matter confused, but not what was going on in terms of Chris's earlier point that the council, some of the aldermen are saying we need our own attorneys. That's it. Claudia, did you have more you wanted to say? No, I was done. Thank you so much. Okay. Anyone else, things you've learned or ideas, um, uh, particularly to help expand our audience? Yeah, I have my hand up. Um, oh, yes, Catherine, go ahead. Sure, um, I was gonna say something else, but uh, Abigail's inspired me to recount what happened to us with the Ida B. Wells Drive um, campaign. And uh, the you implied it, but probably didn't say it directly. Um, the, uh, the chair of all these committees, uh, they're in the back pocket of the mayor because they are appointed by the mayor. And we had full support for uh, replacing Balboa Drive uh, with the name Ida B. Wells Drive until the mayor decided he didn't wanna lose all of those uh, Italian American votes uh, that would come about from it. And we could, as much as Alderman Beale uh, and everyone in his uh, his ward wanted this, and they did because we went down there and and mucked around a little. Um, he wouldn't do it because uh, he was in his back pocket, and that sort of opened my eyes to the fact that at least under the last mayor, the uh, the uh, the councils is nothing can move unless the mayor wants it to move, and and so so anyway. Um, I just wanted to throw that out, but I just have a few um, questions or suggestions because I loved you. You sort of gave us um, a challenge to think of how we can advertise this and get more people uh, uh, outside of it. And I was wondering, one of the things I was wondering is, uh, have any of the um, aldermen actually posted this on their websites uh, or sent it out in any of their uh, newsletters that, that, they, that they send out? So that's one question I have. For an idea. We, we do, we certainly send them the information so they can, um, mm -hmm. particularly um, uh, we send them both the links to how to register and then we send them the link after the fact where they can go watch it. And so whether they choose to share it, I do not know because I don't get all their newsletters, but so we fun. do, we do say, you know, welcome to share. <laughs> So and we also, send them the link. You're pushing them to to uh, to do that. That's good. Uh, That's good. Uh, just want to say, I believe that in the letter we actually do specifically say, please share with uh, your constituents and your staff. Excellent. In addition, we are trying to uh, before the interview look at the alderman's website and identify certain community organizations. Uh, that are incorporated in that ward, and we tell Sophie so that she can uh, send notices to those community nice. organizations. We may be not consistent in doing that, but we, we've done that uh, quite a few times so far. Yeah, the main problem we've got is they're not listed. We do ask the alderman um, in the confirmation letter that Abigail sends uh, once we've got a date, 
with them. We ask them for the list of their organizations. We do not hear from them mainly. So if they're on the website, I will see them. I'll alert Rochelle, who's kind enough then to make sure she chat. She, she will try. If they're not, the website or the email addresses aren't listed, um, she will try to find them herself and send them on to Sophie. So we're trying, again, we're a lot, um, whether or not, um, early on, I know there were a couple things that appeared in uh, a local uh, yeah. website news, but we really, we haven't seen anything since then. So oh, yeah. Cool. Um, well, I, 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 could I make a suggestion for the PR campaign? This is Margie. I think we need to make suggestions to our own league media, like one committee, because one suggestion was you could put out information on our website saying, is your ward cut up? If you want to know about your alderman and all the other aldermans that control your community, I should say your community cut up, get on the Zooming website and you'll be able to find out about your own alderman and the alderman for the rest of the people in your community. Because I don't think people understand what a tool this is. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Block Club has become so popular and it, 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 and it sends out newsletters based on neighborhoods. It might be nice if we could connect in some way with them because this is, this is just the kind of thing they would love. It's, such, it's just such a fabulous resource. And it yeah. needs, yeah. Yeah. And then the okay. other thing that I was thinking, oh, I'm sorry, did you want to say something? I oh, I was just going to say, um, also, if anyone is in their, on Facebook in their neighborhood groups, like each neighborhood kind of has one that you could join it and then you have to tell them that you live in the, in the neighborhood, those would also be a great place to post the board specific neighborhood people to. So if anyone's a member of their Facebook groups, like feel free to kind of post those. Yeah. Uh there's a whole new social media that's gotten quite popular and I, I get there, I get it. Oh, it's called, no, it's not that one. Um, it, it's, I joined when I was doing social media monitoring because it was one of the platforms that we were monitoring and, uh, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, the other thing is, uh, this is down the line, but, um, uh, you know, when, when, with the Illinois Voter Guide, when we get to the municipal elections, um, we were able to add a lot of things. We, you know, we added uh, we added the WTTW two minute interviews. <laughs> it seems to me that we should go out of our way to make sure that uh, any alderman who's uh, uh, by that time uh, been interviewed that we can link to it there. Um, That's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, because because the league no, doesn't oh, wait, have wait, any wait, other. Here's the problem: oh. we won't have interviews with the with the people running against them. And yeah, I, 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 I'm worried. The, I think yeah. we have to. We will have and to talk about the opportunity, that. don't we? Uh, because the WTTW gives everyone the opportunity, don't they? Right, and they they have the same opportunity. And the problem with our interviews is. You know they're they're th they're generally about thirty minutes long. There's a few that are longer. There are a couple yeah. that are shorter, but that would be well, the. But we can talk about that. Yeah, and, we can figure uh, it something out. to put down on the list to talk about. Well, that. we could do something that's like a preemptive. So like before the election season kicks off, it could be a major promotion of like learn about your ward in anticipation of an election coming up because you know we don't know who's running wherever if there's incumbents or not incumbents so it could just be a general promotion of the program leading up to the election well yeah. and i think even apart from the election i mean yeah. i want to i want to exactly. do this now what we you know to be honest but i think that's exactly right i mean we should be promoting the heck out of this and mm -hmm. um you know it's certainly not within the city government committee's um, expertise to do it. So I'm hoping it's, we it's can something I can, people. it's something now that, you know, the website project's done, I can, uh, we're actually going to have probably a communications committee meeting at some point in the next couple of weeks. I can bring that to their attention, how we can kind of do a larger campaign around this. Super. Thank you. And Could as I we, said, Margaret, Margaret will be in touch with you too, to make sure, see how, if anything we can do to facilitate it, we certainly want to. I know we updated the, um, 
uh, uh, news contacts a year ago for for the communications yeah. committee exactly. and it probably needs to be done again because a year so many things changes but yeah um uh hopefully um uh you know i think you know little little uh thing that here and there and the nice thing is you know our the link is www.lwvchicago.org slash i think alderman all the time, I believe it is. So it's a really easy um, link. And, and of course, it's an easy way. Once you go to our website, it's easy. To, um, as long as you know to look under events, it's an easy thing to get to. Yeah. Um, I don't want to hog all the questions. Anyone want to go? Yes. OK. Um, also, um, I'm especially intrigued. Uh, I know that we worked a lot um, in forming the um, the uh, community organizations in the ninth ward when we were doing the Ida B. Wells Drive and, and could send direct emails. And I, what I like is that you're doing that. I'm wondering if uh, if another group could follow up because if what would what would be what's great is if you're establishing contacts and you have this going. Um, the only way in some cases that we can actually get a a, a candidates forum going is by having a, a local group. So if we could not work in silos, but work together with the organizations, the, the candidates forum groups could help with the aldermen, with Zoom with aldermen and vice versa, so that we can go back and forth and uh, and get to know because really the league needs to be known at that level. That's that's the level that we've been trying to work at on the south side here in the south side unit. And this is just perfect for that kind of thing. I yeah, just, just so you know, um, Rochelle created several se sets of spreadsheets for us. And one of them includes what little information we've been able to get on neighborhood yeah. groups with their websites and email addresses. So we have that, we're just keeping adding on to the master list. Yeah. And um, we'll be, uh, we have another one that um, is on issues, which is which is where I got the information, but not just pulling from my head, but I looked at the spreadsheet to be able to raise some of the issues and Excellent. the specifics of who said what. Um, and then we also um, have the another one that has the contact information for uh, each of the offices in terms of the uh, uh, staff person and how to reach that person. So. We, we're, we're moving it along and when we're, you know, at any time people can ask us for what we have so far, but certainly when we have finished it, we will definitely share it with the board and anyone, if you, um, you'll, you'll hopefully we'll communicate to all the committee chairs and stuff that if you want to know that these resources are available. And then, um, go ahead, sorry, Margaret. When we, when, when we began the project, Compiling a list of community organizations was uh, was um, one of our goals. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alderman Smith had listed on her website several organizations, and we sent the information about the interview to them directly. Mm -hmm. We we always we we always ask for the names of organizations within the ward, but we don't get a lot of back if. It's available on their website, or the office contact is responsive. Then, then we have some information, but it's awfully hard to to um, snuff it out. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, you know, you just, Chris just said finish it, and and that sort of leads to us what's what is finished <laughs> exactly, and. Um, I was just thinking as an analogy, you know, the um, how the state has uh, their big project to interview uh, all of the members of the General Assembly. And uh, on the South Side, <clears throat> we've taken charge of big swaths of that. And uh, we made a decision uh, that we weren't interested in going every year, every, you know, even four years to those that are who have been there forever. And we, we um, tackle anyone who's new. So all of our interviews have been with people and they have a little time, they have almost a year by the time we get to them. And it just seems to me that, that you might think of that as a strategy going forward uh, after the municipal, give them a little time 
and and just add the, the new ones uh, so that everybody has a face uh, in in the project. Going That's forward. a great That's idea a to, to tap down the enormity of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and just so you know, from our timing, I'm very hopeful that we'll basically be finished by the end of June with all the interviews. We are going to go back one more time to the offices where they in the so far have not responded after multiple attempts mm -hmm. uh, with one last attempt to say, okay, we're finishing this up. We'd love to include you. Um, and uh, here's a list of all your, all your compatriots that have already sat for interviews. Wouldn't you like to be among them? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Or it might even be a little more telling if you gave the list uh, of the ones who haven't, if it's small enough, and say, uh, do you really want to be in this list on our website? <laughs> we, <laughs> I'm a little I'd like, to, I'd like to work positive. <laughs> it's, it's morning. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> Anything else people have? These are this has been really helpful for us. Okay. Okay. Well, I just want to thank you all for spending part of your Saturday morning. I'm glad it's been so cold, so you have an incentive to stay inside. <laughs> and uh, uh, again, encourage you if you haven't had a chance. As I said, most of these interviews are about 30 minutes long, so you're not sitting in, uh, hours in front of the computer. Uh, my trick is I have an HDM um, I cord and I attach my laptop to my television. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not glued to just my computer. I can walk around and my, I have a nice big screen television and it's a, a great way to watch these Zoom programs if I'm not, if I'm not doing any talking. So, mm -hmm. so um, thank you again and Join us uh, Thursday for uh, Scott Wagesback or uh, sign on after the fact and watch the interview. Usually it's about a day or, or two before Sophie switches from the register for the premiere to the video being available to watch, uh, but uh, won't be long. And he, his was, uh, I thought, a very interesting interview. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes. It was Thank very you. interesting. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much.